Good morning. Typical busy Saturday. How did you get on? Well, I didn't have any trust in Newcastle yesterday, but if you did, you could have taken on that late 1-2 lead for Bournemouth. They always have that second goal threat to them. Richie coming up with a 92nd minute equaliser. What a substitution. Wow. Matt Ritchie, straight on. That's the way to get the fans on your side. Tottenham and Wolves got involved on two occasions here because this Tottenham side looking very sturdy. Now they've got some of the big names back. So I've got the equaliser, Kulisevsky, but we didn't get the second equaliser. This was a bit of a mystery for me, taking Richarlison off bringing Timo Werner on. He's hardly a goal merchant, is he? A very strange decision, managerial-wise. Richarlison's your man, basically. Uh, so if you laid over three and a half goals to cover this 1-2 scoreline and got involved in Tottenham again, you'd have got out that second one with a break-even after the first one yielded a profit. Late Manchester United equalised. It was always going to be, wasn't it? Rodri again. Always turns up with these spectacular late finishes, as he did, I think, Sheffield United, if I recall. But no winner on this occasion. This is a big blow for the title for Manchester City. There's some four points behind, but they have a game in hand over Liverpool and Arsenal. So they can reduce the gap to one point only if they win their next match. So watch out for their next performance. It's a must win. Heidenheim and Leverkusen. Well, if Leverkusen remained nil one late on, I would have laid them. I was contemplating it, but then Addy turns up with that second goal, and we still got the goal from Heidenheim, who'd been in excellent form. So that was a bit unlucky there. Hoffenheim and Union Berlin. Well, all down to red cards. I don't tend to play doubly red carded matches. I did lay Union Berlin late on because Heid Hoffenheim midweek kept their score draw sequence alive with a very late equaliser against Köln. Wolfsburg and Dortmund, well, this is typical of a pre-Champions League performance. You get done away from home. Another score draw for Wolfsburg. They lost their last match, but they had three score draws prior to that. So this is uh, all down to the Champions League. Similar performance, I think, from Napoli, pre-Champions League for them. Not in the best of form, but did get you the equaliser after conceding first. 90th minute job. Again, similar performance to their prior two home matches where they did cross the line with wins. But on this occasion, you could just manage a late equaliser. Similar story for Juventus, who I don't think are involved in Europe. But a tricky encounter. coming, Having to come back from behind twice. I got the first profit there. Did you get the second profit? Have you kept faith in the old lady? Fortuna Sittard and AZ Altmar, have you stuck with the odds? Well, you've got AZ Altmar win coming from 1-0 down. Sparta Rotterdam Excelsior, this was one I should have got involved with at the 0-2. Because it's an odds-on favourite, 0-2 down on or around half-time. It's so early in the match, you might as well get involved. Lay Excelsior back Sparta Rotterdam. What do you see here? Boom, boom. And then Luritsen with his third goal, second goal for a winner there. Superb performance. So watch out for those nil twos. Here in Veen, go ahead, Eagles. Bit of a shock result, this. I'm not sure if or how I would have played. Very late, late. Here in Veen, not exactly your Bayern Munichs or your Barcelonas. Talking of Barcelona, Celta Vigo scoring first. I know that Celta Vigo equalised uh, pre-Champions League Barcelona again. So, uh, And it took a 97th minute Lewandowski penalty to get the winner. So very, very unconvincing indeed. Purely down to the Champions League. Fenerbahce coming from behind. Get the win. And look at their pre-match odds. 1.4. So you'd have been expecting that. Hope you played there. Similar story with Genk conceding first. If you got involved in the half-time score market, you'd have been delighted with the 2-1.
at nil one down. Don't forget the half time markets can give you some value if you wanted to play there. RWDM are newly promoted, so that would have given you some confidence. Antwerp, I think, were favourites against Mechelen. Indeed, so you could have taken on Mechelen here and you wouldn't have been rewarded. But Aldevireld missing a penalty, the absolute tool. Give me £100,000 a week and uh, I promise you I'll be scoring penalties from 12 yards. Mladar Boleslav and Barak Ostrava. Well, we did take on Ostrava, 1-3 up at half-time. We didn't get anything from Mladar Boleslav. But short enough odds that it's not going to cost you too much. I was contemplating a Huddersfield equaliser, and indeed they got one late on. Because they're under the new manager, and they just scored three goals against Southampton. No, no sooner did they get it than the old Jimmy Greaves turns up. It's a game of two halves with a 1-2 win. So shocking, or a really poor result for Huddersfield. that have been disappointed there. This was the only real loss of the day. Leicester City couldn't get that third goal. And this is probably, in hindsight, would have been better attacked via both teams to score. No, where you can cover the 0-2, cover the 1-2. Just in case Middlesbrough turn up as defensively sound as they were when they played the two Premier League sides in the Cup. <laughs> Millwall and Sheffield Wednesday, arguable. You could have taken on the Owls, but Millwall are not in the greatest shape. We did lay the draw late on in Bolton. Because both sides need points for different reasons, as is the case of Cheltenham and Port Vale. You saw that Desmond 2 2 ending. So you could have taken that on. Don't forget your 2 2s. Disappointing for Peterborough. If you did lay the draw second half, expecting Peterborough to win, well, you'd have got Blackpool getting the winner. Poor performance from Peterborough. Salford was another Desmond 2 2, another new manager. Really getting a great tune out of Salford in their pursuit of survival. And they're doing an excellent job under this new manager. They're already up to 19th. Really significant gap between them and the relegation sides. Superb stuff. This is the impact that a new manager can have. 0-0 at half-time. You could have laid the draw second half. PSG, though, pre-Champions League, if you could have trusted them. We did lay Saint-Étienne 0-2 up at half-time. Uh, given Angers, I think, a second in the league, but we didn't get a re response. This was a poor performance for Panathinaikos against 10 men. A 2-2 draw, allowing the 10 men to equalise. Oh, boy. Apple Beersheba did equalise. As I said, very, very reliable side in the live stream. Porto, pre-Champions League, good performance. Liera coming from 2-2 to a 4-2 win. It's one I spotted. I did have a bit of a play on this one. Uh, very good stuff. The late win for what's on favourite, 1.53 at 2-2, very late on. The in-play stats were excellent. I did shout this in the live stream, lay Celtic late on, because uh, Kilmarnock stats were pretty equal. And we got the Kilmarnock equaliser. If you got involved there, well done. Really short odds lay that one. And Hearts continue to impress if you laid the nil-nil second half. Very reliable trading side parts this season in the SPL. On to today. Sheffield United against Brighton. This is likely to be defence v attack. You know Sheffield United are going to do. Keep a nil-nil at half time. Keep a nil-nil 70th plus minute. Try to nick a 1-0 and off we go. Luton against Man United as ever. Depends which Man United turns up. If it's the one with Garnacho and Hoyland scoring then they will get the better of Luton. But Luton have put together some really good performances of late. Might see both teams to score here. You're certainly going to see an interesting match. Luton won't be that easy to overcome. Freiburg and Eintracht Frankfurt, tough to call, 2.25 the favourite. Bayern Munich have been really spluttering of late. It's pre-Champions League or post-Champions League. And they're away at Bochum. I wouldn't be backing them at 1.33. They've got to rediscover their goal-scoring form at the moment. Lazio-Bologna, 2.4, the favourite. Lazio post-Champions League, tough to call that one. Empoli and Fiorentina. Fiorentina going through a bit of a rough patch at the moment, but they this is a, an opportunity for them to get a positive result against a lower league 
lower in the table side. Udinese against Cagliari, where they're playing one of those sides where they've drawn 100% of their matches this season, Udinese. But there's nothing like ending a draw sequence by nicking a 1-0 win, which I think they got against Juventus recently. So if you're keeping clean sheets, then you're not going to be getting draws. So that's the hope today. If Cagliari do score first, I would consider laying Cagliari, given Udinese's two consecutive clean sheets. Daniela De Rossi playing Frosinone. Uh, new manager for Roma. So I would be looking for a positive Roma result here. Can't do much research uh, unless we're just looking at the matches under De Rossi. Monza and AC Milan, 1.8 the favourite. That's quite high odds, but uh, I think this is pre... It can't be pre-Champions League, but it could be if they're playing on Wednesday rather than Tuesday. But let's have a look. Or has their Champions League gone, AC Milan? Because that's really big odds, I think, for AC Milan. Yes, they're in the Europa League against Rennes on the 22nd. This is the second leg where they were absolutely emphatic in the first leg. So shouldn't really impact them today. But as you saw with uh, Dortmund, you saw them with Bayern Munich, saw with Leipzig, pre-European club competition, particularly when you're away from home, I can see you in a spot of bother. Derby style match this 20 against Utrecht, but the odds look absolutely spot on. Ajax. Second half of the season have been in superb form, but they've had a couple of uh, dodgy results of late. Bodo Glimt midweek, 2-2, and a 3-2 loss to Heerenveen, which could have been pre-Europa Conference League distraction. And they did get that third goal disallowed, so they have uh, still that potential as a trading side if any senior begin to score first. All of the Favs today, Vitesse Arnhem, really poor side, these two. In the wrong end of the table. The only reason Vitesse are favourite is that Volendam are so poor. Feyenoord and RKC Valvik, 1.13 the favourite. Feyenoord. Moving on down. Real Madrid, post-Champions League, I believe. 1.6 favourite away at Rayo Vallecano. Should be a comfortable evening for them. But uh, the market's not hugely convinced. Almeria, yet to find their win this season. Is this going to be the opportunity? against Granada. 2.1, only the favourite there. Mallorca tend to do their best work at home. Real Sociedad, post-Champions League, might be gettable because they'll still be fixated on the Champions League, a side not one of the biggest sides in Europe, so deep into the Champions League. They'll be expecting a, you'll be expecting a distraction, I think, from them. An opportunity for Mallorca to try to nick a 1-0. Real Betis, I would slightly favour here against Alaves, but only 2.1 the favourite. We've also got these peripheral leagues, La Liga 2, Turkish Super League, Galatasaray involved in Europe on Thursday, Pendikspor newly promoted, and we've got a whole raft of other leagues as well. Austrian Bundesliga, no odds on favourites there today. Yes, there is, Austria Klagenfurt. And in Belgium, Club Brugge, Royal Union St. Gilwa, both away from home, odds on favourites, Anderlecht favourite and Ghent. So we've got uh, four out of four odds on there. So it's a nice uh, coupon today. Probably a two o'clock start for the live chat or the live stream. So if you head on over to Football Trading Profits, at Football Trading Profits, I think it's called, then you'll see the live stream. It's a very good live stream yesterday. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Nice of you to turn up. It was very good stuff. I hope more of you will come today. Two o'clock start at YouTube. All I can offer you at the moment will be the YouTube channel because I haven't set up. I've set up the live stream a bit nearer to two o'clock and then forward the uh, copy just into the live space here for you. But if you just head off, make sure you're subscribed to Football Trading Profits YouTube channel, please. That way you can be alerted to any live chats as they come, and then we can get stuck in. Really good live chat yesterday. I hope you enjoyed it. So we've got a new subscriber, Graham, 
Shuttleworth. So uh, a few more of you, please subscribe. You'll get your review preview, which you're watching now, and the live streams whenever they appear. So I hope you can come along. It was very good yesterday, very entertaining. Two o'clock today. Uh, I'll be on just a little bit earlier just to set up. And uh, I do like your feedback, uh, particularly in these early instances when I'm using Streamlabs. I'm not a techie, so it does help very much. So thank you very much for that. Hope to see a few of you around, make some Sunday profits like we did on Saturday.